Well, hello, hello, hello. Three, two, one. What is up, everybody? This is Hectology. Um, and I am here. This is Hector, and this is Hectology. Um, real quick, or is it gonna be quick? I don't know. Well, yesterday I got to see the Logan Paul versus uh Floyd Mayweather uh exhibition match, and I gotta tell you, um, it wasn't. It was exci- it was exciting it was like an exciting fight because you just wanted to see kind of you know you wanted to see Floyd May- Mayweather beat up knock him out or live or shot or whatever put him down um because that's the only way of actually winning the exhibition because in the end you know there they, there were no judges they didn't count count it by each round and Honestly, Floyd didn't take a lot of punches. He didn't. He didn't throw a lot of punches because it wouldn't even matter. And once he reaches, I mean, I'm pretty sure he was confident enough that he wouldn't get knocked down by Logan Paul. Uh, by Logan Paul, but in the end, it kind of uh, what I saw people online say is like, uh, like it made it look worse because he didn't took out take out an like a basically an amateur in, in Logan Paul. And, you know, I mean, he, uh, granted, you know, F- Floyd isn't well known for his knockout power. He used to be a long time ago, but then he was just a des- decision machine. You know, he would just go out there and and play defense and counter and and try and, and win the fight. But, uh, you know, people cheered him on. You know, usually he is the bad guy in every other fight, but this time he was the heavily favored good guy, you know, and, you know, you get to, you got, you got to hear that from the crowd, and I think also online, too, there was, you know, I think people favored Mayweather more than Logan, because, you know, I mean, both of them have bad experiences with, uh, the, you know, their, their history, and, you know, Logan, for one, was, you know, that whole suicide forest in Japan thing, and then it was Floyd's, um, you know, arrest, those assaults. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, like that. That um, both of them. Granted, both of them were tainted, but you know, who's the greater evil in this? And I mean, I would say Logan. He's he's pretty all right guy. It's just that you know, Jake. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Logan Paul. He's. I mean, Floyd is just. Uh, people know him more and. They probably just don't really know much about that. I don't even know much about that either. I just heard it, and that's what people, you know, usually say about it. That he, you know, of his bat, of his, uh, of his history. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was a fun fight. Um, the fights before the funny thing about it is that one of I didn't buy the pay per view. One of my friends bought it. I told him I'm not gonna buy that ridiculous show. Um and uh yeah he he bought he bought the pay-per-view props to him and uh he invited us to his house and I was like oh, wait a minute he's got a projector and it's like five o'clock and grand you know I'll tell you this we live in California so it's pretty much it's pretty much brightness all the time and <laughs> it was such a bad idea from the get-go because I was like, dude, really? I mean, do you have a tarp at least or something to cover the sides of? He didn't even have a good uh, spot. He just had it right directly right where, where the sun was hitting. So then he just brought out his monitor and we watched it there instead. But look, he tried his best. He's not a, he's not a much of a host. I'm usually the one who hosts fights and stuff. And I watch it in my 65-inch. And we have a good time. It's just that he wanted to, you know, shake things up and have the projector going. And it was just too bright outside. And the fight, you know. And it all oh, also in the fight, man, it started raining. And where was it? I think in Florida, which always happens to rain. And it's very humid. And then during in one of the fights, I think it was uh, Arias versus Herd. They just uh, had to keep wiping the, the decals 
like the big ass cash app uh sponsorship right in the middle of the ring and on the sides and you know the other logos as well Lo the other sponsorships were also like you know if you if you walk by near there or you step on it you're gonna slip and you know Arya's pretty much complained about that the whole fight because he just kept slipping because he's just trying to throw power punches and stuff and i think that one was probably like the best the second best fight um that was on there because we, <laughs> we only got to we only watched to watch like three fights because i think we saw like a glimpse of ocho cinco like very like brightly you know because the projector was on but then we watched that one and then the uh, then uh what's his name those light heavyweights came on and i didn't watch i didn't watch that one that much because i want to go get you know went to the ice cream machine ice cream ice cream truck to get some snacks and you know boom that fool got knocked out and okay it's cool i'm out i'm not tripping about, i don't even know these guys i don't even know these boxers I'm not a boxing. I'm not really of a, a big boxing fan. I, I usually just watch if Canelo's fighting or or any other champion like that's kind of major. But look, it was a fun spectacle. Now we're gonna watch. Next time we're gonna watch uh, Jake versus Tyron Willie, which I think. I mean, I I, I would expect Willie to get it done. Granted, he's not in an MMA fight because in an MMA fight you need to. You know, worry about the wrestling, the kicks, and the grappling, and all that stuff, you know? And in this one, he just has to box and throw one of his uh, pretty good right hands. You know, he's a, he's got a really good right hand, pretty explosive power. He's had his, he has four losses in his last, uh, uh, you know, uh, f you know, fights. He Four losses in a row, which... You know, and then UFC. I mean, he. I think he he uh, finished his contract, and he just. I guess they just offered him. Jake Paul offered him that fight, and he just took it. And props to him. You know, he he's gonna get a big payday off of that. You know, late, Jake and Logan are just uh, they're big names. They're like they're like a Conor McGregor. They got all these uh, followers that will and you know will buy the pay per view. And that's what you want. That's what you need. Somebody to buy the pay per view. Your your most loyal fans. Out of those, tw you know, twenty million combined fans they have, or f maybe fifty, they, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure some of those fans are gonna buy the pay per view, to I either that or watch him get beat up, you know. So I mean, I, I expect Willie to get it done by knockout. And I hope I, you know, I am hopeful he doesn't gas out. But in, the, you know, recently he hasn't been doing that. He just hasn't been very active in the fights. He just gets beat up. Um, you know, against uh, his last fight, he he did get submitted. It kind of kind of went bad. It kind of went from bad to worse. You know, going down from when he lost to Usman, he just got pretty much uh, wrestled and didn't do that much. And then um, who was it next? was um it was burns gilbert burns and that he got um he got out you know out he got pretty much not really dominated but he lost i guess he did lose like all all the five rounds then and then the it was the uh oh colby covington colby beat him broke his rib um, and then the last one was the Vicente Luque fight, which, you know, some people kind of gave him a little bit of an edge, but, you know, he, you know, Tyree hit it with his good and with his best right hand, but Luque just, you know, he's got a good chin, came back, um, cut, you know, hit him a couple of times and then submitted him, which was incredible. It was a very good thing to see Luque come up like that, even though, you know, we are, he's, he's fighting to be the best in the world. This is going to happen and he's going to lose eventually. He had, a, he had the, that UFC welterweight belt for like three years. And now it's just, you know, he's now, he's, he's older now too, you know. And he's been in the game for such a long time. Eventually, he's just going to start getting a little rusty. Uh, or, you know, just just younger guys. More, you know, more, what's the word? More hungry than he is because he already had the belt. Will try to, you know, 
you know, step over him, you know, and get on, you know, just climb on top of that mountain that he used to be on. And that's that's just going to happen. He's not going to he's he's going to retire from the UFC. I hope hopefully he he goes to Bellator or maybe the PFL like you know Anthony Pettis or Rory McDonald and all that but you know we'll see we'll see what the future holds for for Woodley. Uh that's enough for the I guess maybe the monologue. I don't know. I don't have that much to say other than yeah, it was uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. There was a lot to <laughs> there was a lot to do. Friday I got to watch the the Conjuring, the Devil Made Me Do It movie, the new one that came out on HBO Max, straight to streaming. Maybe it was in the I don't go to the theaters, but maybe maybe it was in the theaters. Um, I thought I'm not I'm not like a big guy on the Conjuring like series, like uh, like like those kind of like uh um possessions and i'm kind of new to them i don't really like i don't really search out for them you know and and when i do i just try to look for like you know specific ones and i think the conjuring does have a a pretty nice uh you know array of actors you know especially the ones that play the the warrens i don't remember their names because this show is no scripts. It's all in the head. Whatever I remember. This is a brain exercise for me. So we have the Warrens who were, who were actually two people that were, you know, they were real. They supposedly, you know, try to find demons and people possess and haunted houses and haunted dolls and all that stuff. Right? And um in this and in this story um you know let me I, you know as I always do I give you like a summary of the story I'm not going to try to explain to you the whole thing just brief things that that caught my eye and I can remember and maybe I sometimes like this one was kind of interesting because when you relate when you kind of t- you know talk about possessions you know, and then also involving a murder and then saying that you were possessed and that's why you killed somebody. It's very hard to, um, you know, battle that in court because how are you going to be able to find proof that you were possessed? Right. And this is what this is what like what what it was around the time when this real event happened and. You know, I don't know what, you know, of course, you never really know the real thing. Back in the, what was it, in the 60s and in the, in the 70s, you know, it was crazy times. People were painting their houses with lead. They were, they were, you know, using makeup with radiation. People going crazy once in a while, you know. It's just uh, something that you don't really get to, to really remember because you just, they don't teach you all those bad things that happened in the past and some people did, did wind up crazy you know because they they um they licked the rocks the wrong substance or they're just you know it was the years where they started creating you know LSD and and new drugs so you know it's just people went crazy and then and also that satanic panic where you you had people like back in the days like scared of you know of uh, penta- uh, pentagrams and all that stuff and and you know the, you know basically the devil worshiping and and the, the 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 church of satanism or whatever it's called and you know people got scared because of that and you know that satanic panic is what 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 it was back in the 60s 70s 80s maybe 90s too and um for this movie you know the movie you, you, like it, it, it's not that scary it's just that it's 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 a it's a thriller because it, it doesn't really like give you a whole lot of like 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 boo like scary mo- scary scary moments or anything like that it's just the um which is the lingering i guess it's just like what's gonna happen next you know because we had um this 
It wasn't like in the other Conjure movies where, you know, it, hap it happens to be in a, in a haunted house or anything. This time it was by witchcraft. And, you know, they they went around the house and found this uh, this little relic um, that was pretty much, uh, you know, under there to kind of curse the house and, or the person and, and summon this, uh, you know, demon to, you know, to exact revenge and um the the guy who winds up getting possessed does it be in you know he does it out of love for his girlfriend whose brother was possessed his younger her younger brother was possessed who happened to be like around seven or six years old and the the demon didn't really show until it wanted to until it like until it fulfilled its like uh what is it it's prophecy or something to kind of unlock itself from the you know the 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 uh the demon world as they say and yeah i mean it it, it goes hmm what else happens it goes like that and then they and then there's also like other you know there's other pieces in there that you have to you know you have to uh that they they're trying to explain like this guy is also important for the for the for the ritual and this other person is important for the ritual and so it's a of it's pretty much a chain of people that that has to align in order to fulfill it and if if it's something's not aligned then it's you know something happens in the end which you know spoilers the the one that does the 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 witching and all the rituals and the cursing winds up getting crushed and um yeah it was it was a pretty interesting movie i'm not i'm not one to be into a lot of those demon movies but this one was pretty fun uh i really like the actors the uh the the cgi was you know it was fine it was it was it was, it was pretty good um the the story you know it's the story is the one that kind of gives me like the story is the one that kind of like, like, uh, I don't know about it. Like, you know, it's, it's for me as a person who doesn't believe in all that, like ghost stuff or demon stuff, it's, it's kind of hard for me to like play into the whole scenario of, um, the real guy actually, I mean, in the movie, you know, he actually, they actually say, yeah, yeah, he's like going to jail. He, he's getting, he's getting sentenced for, for 10 years in real life. He actually does five years for stabbing um one of his friends one i think a land his landlord or something and you know they kind of switch it in the movie to say it was his friend and stuff but that's what happened and and then they were also you know in behind the scenes they were talking about it you know with the actors and whatnot and I I found that interesting because you know <laughs> I'm pretty sure some people were like mm, I mean I'm this is a movie but I'm pretty sure that guy killed somebody uh you can't you can't stay away from that you know that movie was yeah the conjuring the devil made me do it was a good movie it was a good movie i think you guys should watch it if you have hbo max you can watch it right now for free i mean for your subscription one that you pay so right after i finished watching uh the conjuring 2 the Conjuring 2, the the Devil Made Me, or was it The Conjuring 3? I don't even know. The Conjuring 4, I don't know. I don't know which wh which one it is. Look, after I finished watching The Conjuring, the new the new movie, I was browsing on uh, HBO Max to see what you know they have. They they always you know add something every month, and this time this time they had it was this movie called Fast Company, which is directed by David Cronenberg who I famously remember him directing uh, directing The Fly which was quite a uh, a remarkable remarkable film with you know the the special effects and whatnot you know and he's he's also he's also done some other like wild and crazy movies and also this one i mean this one was kind of out there too because i never you know i'm not a person who's really interested in in cars and this one was more of a like of a racing 
with like like heavy like motor it was more motor and and it would just be like you know pretty much zoom in like zooming zoom in speed and stuff and they would like literally put like uh, like some sort of like oil down on the on the on the wheels and the wheels would be like um like pretty much all like loose and 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 like twist they could twist and stuff because of how how fast the the wheel turns it's gonna tear off the the wheel so like there's these special big ass wheels and the um, the you know the the body of the car was just off you know just basically fiberglass and from the sides it would just be like the like the the exhaust would be you know pushing out like heat and the uh, the story of, of it was the this guy who was his name is Lonnie Lucky Man Johnson. He was he's the pretty much the poster boy of this of this kind of this racing scene with these big loud cars. And he uh you know they they went around, you know, touring and stuff you know challenge other you know pretty much not others but like kind of the same people they would race against and other new people and they had a rivalry with this one guy who was named um i think his name was gray black it just involved a lot of like oh look man lonnie's boss who was in charge of the of the fast company he was kind of sketchy and wanted Lonnie to keep racing, even though he had like a like a, Lonnie had a protege. He had, he was he had to you know race for him, and he was gonna be coming up, and you know, uh you know Lonnie was not for that because he was like I kind of want to give the the young kid a a, a shot here, and there a lot and he was like basically man look, like do me the favor because these these uh these sponsors or whatever they want you know they want you they want you to represent the company <clears throat> and race for us you know and that's what people came here to see they want they came here to watch you and he was like all right i gotta do it if i gotta do it the kid wasn't happy you know too happy about it you know pretty much got mad he was like you know it's not fair man i've been racing i've, I've won the race uh you know the you know the What's that called? The you know the the race to like to try to get in and try to get in the the actual like the qualifiers. There we go, the qualifiers. And you know he was like, oh, "Fuck, I like this fucking messed up, man." Treating me like shit. And I mean he still stays. And you know you know Lonnie. Oh man, in the in the beginning of the movie was pretty intense because, like that shit blew up. The Lonnie's car blew up pretty bad, and he was about to die. Like he was seconds away from dying. He's like, man, like that's just me. I'm just lucky. Dude's fucking car blew up, and he just walked out of there, and everybody everybody was like, what? What? That dude is alive. In the end. Some bad shit happens. The 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 Lonnie's boss, you know, uh, betrays him. Tries to fire, you know, tries to fire him, and he's like, "Fuck it, you know, fuck that. I don't want to work with you no more." And he gets his money because he was kind of eyeing Lonnie's trailer. Um, they would just walk, you know, drive around in in vans and stuff. He's like, "I mean, that could be you someday, man. Just let me know. I just push Lonnie away." And he's like, all right, let's do it. For more money, I'll do it. So, you know, in the end, uh, the, the Lonnie's boss, he's, he and the one of the, his uh, Gray Black's associates uh, pretty much tries to kill um, Lonnie by setting up, like, like oil or I don't know what it might have been like gasoline around the tracks and you know he he wanted him to go on the left lane cuz that's where he's going to be and gray black was going to take the right the right lane and right you know right until like Lonnie almost reached gray like did like a full like you know I'm going to sacrifice myself 
and you know winded up getting killed himself he took the he took that dive because he's like i don't i don't have a good feeling about this and he he winded up saving lonnie or oh no it, because it, it wasn't lonnie it was his protege because once he got fired by his his boss he's like you can drive again you know i don't give a shit so he 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 drove, and he, the young kid was about to die. But since gr- the you know the rival took uh, his place, that dude died instead. And the, the guy, you know the the boss, the the former boss, tried to escape. And Lonnie fucking went into one of those uh, as a, as what what they might call a, those funny cars. I think they called them funny cars. And that dude just zoomed next to the. He had like a an airplane. <laughs> And he 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 managed to like damage one of the wings, and that dude just pretty much hit the the trailer of Gray Black and pretty much perished right there, right right then and there into fume and smoke and flames. Man, and then it, you know, a couple you know minutes later it ended with them being all happy. You know, it's you know we're just gonna split up. You know, I mean the Fast Company, it's over now you know they would sell like oil and stuff so i mean it was a fun movie to watch it was quite interesting to see all you know how they would like go in those cars and just zoom like like pretty fast and they like it was it's the cinematography they actually got real people to the to to drive those cars they got real people and then the the real people that drive the cars and then the actors so i mean you get the best of the of the real life thing and the and the and the acting too. Um, that was Fast Company. I'll give it a good look if you got um HBO Max. I um I also watched oh, oh I also watched the Rental, which is a movie directed by uh, Dave Franco, James Franco's uh, younger brother. And it started, um, you know, quite a bunch of people that I do like, like um, the guy from what's his name, that dude from uh, Shameless, um, Lip. There we go, Lip. Um, who's that chick from Community? Um, oh, Alice, Allison Brie. That's her name. The girl from Community. That's Allison Brie. Um, the dude from Legion, Dan Stevens. Um, who else we got? I don't know. And this other chick that I don't know where she, she, which other movie she came out in. I and mean, I don't ever seen her before. But look, we have all, all these two. We had the lip. I don't know what's his name in the, in the show, in the movie. But yeah, let's just call him Lip. Lip, and the chick that I've never seen in any movie or or any TV show. I think. Um, they're a couple, and Lip happens to be the brother of Dan Stevens, who, you know, if you know, is, uh, you know, Legion, or, I don't know, probably been around some other shows, I don't, I, that's the only thing I remember him from, is Legion, so, Lip and, and Legion, they are brothers, right, and, um, you know, and the Lip's girlfriend happens to work for Legion. And, you know, Legion didn't like that. You know, I mean, Legion... Legion is a weirdo. Because <laughs> they go on this trip. They go on this trip together. Kind of like a cat, like a, another, like a vacation house or whatever. You know... Alison Brie and Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens, um, they're in a relationship, you know. And Dan Stevens' character Legion, he wants to, uh, you know, he gets kind of likes uh, the, you know, his coworker who happens to be Lip's girlfriend. And you know, they have a little, you know, they they take some. I think they they took some Molly. That Alice and Bree's character, you know, they're like, let's some, um, like, have some of this stuff. And so they, they, they take a little bit. Cause she's like, I'm not feeling too well. I'll do it tomorrow. You guys can, you know, party without me. I'm gonna just knock out. And she knocks out and they, they're out there and Lip's character winds up getting too drunk. 
He knocks out on the couch. He knocks out on the couch. And they're, Dan Stevens and, and Lip's girlfriend are outside. They're like, let's just get in the hot tub. And you kind of see, like, they're starting to vibe, you know. They, they start giving each other looks. They get they get close to each other because they're right next to the sauna jet. And they both share it and stuff. And, and so they start getting close. And they, then they start making out. And then they hear, uh, you know, Lip's dog bark. And so they're like, oh, we just, uh, you know, nothing happened. And so they, uh, so then the, then the girl, Lip's girl, like, goes in, she goes, she goes inside to take a shower. And then you see, like, you know, you know, in the, in the fogginess of the, of the, you know, of the door, you can see Dan Stevens goes in the shower you know, cut, you know, cut to black, you know, you know, they did it, and then they have, a, you know, they wake up, and they have giant hangovers, and then they're like, um, me and, um, you know, Lip, you know, Lip and I, um, who, you know, Le- Lip and Steven, uh, uh, Legion's girlfriend were gonna go t- take a, they were all actually gonna go hiking, but since they were all, you know, uh, Legion and and Lip's girlfriend were hung over, they decided not to go. And then they kind of talked about, oh man, well, what what are we gonna do about this uh, situation we got in ourselves? In? And she's like, we're not gonna talk about it. You know, we're not gonna tell them anything. Let's just forget about it. And you know, she goes in, take a sh- tries to take a shower, and she notices that there's a camera inside the in the in the shower head and she's like what the you know what the hell is this and then she tells that you know legion hey like there's a camera up there and i'm pretty sure whoever put the camera on there what you know was filming us and the you know the the guy who was in charge or the landlord landlord they kind of saw him as like a racist or something and and they just kind of had it out for him, and you know, his, I think his name was like Taylor in that in the movie. I think he was the most, uh, I don't know, kind of seemed the most uh, genuine. That that was like, yeah, actually, kind of work here, you know. But look, he um starts working, and. And, uh, cause like Allison Bree's character later calls them because, uh, the, 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 the sauna stops working. So then the, you know, she calls him up and tells him, Hey, can you fix the sauna? And he goes in there and then, uh, uh, Lip's girlfriend confronts him about the camera. And he's like, I don't know nothing about that camera. And, you know, they kind of get like into a little scuffle with, with, uh, uh, Taylor and Lip's girlfriend because they're fighting over the phone to call them, to, you know, to call nine one one. She tries to call nine one one, and I mean, he actually was like, you know what, I'm gonna call the cops. And Taylor pulls out the phone and she's like, no, 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 no. And so she starts panicking, and then Lip sees them struggling for the phone, and he goes in there, attacks Taylor, and pretty much like kind of knocks him out in the toilet in the in the in the in the in the, <coughs> in the bathtub and so it winds up looking pretty bad for him he's like w- once the cops because then allison briggs character was like one you know we gotta call the cops he's gonna call the cops regardless and once they go back to check on him on him uh you know they find out that he's not breathing because there's actually another there's actually another person that's the one putting cameras and and surveilling them and looking them from afar, and this guy is actually the one, you know, doing everything. He's cohort, you know, coercing everything, and and he was the one that set up the cameras and everything. So it wasn't even Taylor. He didn't even know nothing about the cameras. He didn't know nothing about that. He was just a landlord. So you know, they start bickering because Allison, Bree, and Lib went. You know, they went hiking, right? So then he kind of mentioned something about. You know how Lip, you know Allison Bree's character and and that you know Legion winded up being together because he's like she's like it's kind of funny because um I kind of stole him for I kind of stole him from uh, you know his 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 ex you know and 
and uh you know and and then slip is like um actually he kind of like did it with her too you know that he cheated on the other ex so he he, he has a kind of a history of cheating with his girlfriends and she kind of gets mad about that because she's like oh my god you have a history of doing you know of cheating on drugs and all that stuff which he happened to do with uh his his uh co-worker slash lips girlfriend and so you know it starts getting problematic and that's when she's like you know what you know guys like i'm gonna just do molly, molly by myself and you guys can you know not do it because because lip was trying to find his dog because they couldn't find his dog you know and so they were just trying to find the dog and they were they couldn't find the dog and she was like i just she was all you know she was pretty on she was lit on molly so she was like i'm gonna go you know have a bath you know i bathe myself you know in, in the in the bathtub not in the bathtub in the in the the jacuzzi and so she you know she winds up calling taylor because the j jacuzzi didn't work and so you know taylor fixes it and then that's that's when uh lip's girlfriend confronts uh uh you know taylor and then you get into scuffle and then now we're here where they are um they're like what the hell you know he's dead he's not breathing so they kind of conjure up an idea to um pretty much hide the body or figure out something to do with the body because you know you know legion doesn't want lip to go to 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 jail again because his brother has gone to jail and you know he just doesn't want his brother to go to jail you know and so he's trying to defend him so you know that happens he winds up you know trying to you know they try to um throw him over like their their house happens to be like right next to a cliff and so he winds up uh they wind up throwing him over the cliff but like he he doesn't go all the way down and he winds up next to some rocks so then they just start throwing <laughs> big old rocks uh boulders at him on his head you know just trying to lunge him out and um you know from there it starts getting more crazy because then then uh alice and breeze character starts you know she's like you guys are crazy i'm gonna get out of here so she she winds up driving thinking she's gonna drive out of there and she hits like um these like um these road spikes and like the like what the cops use and stuff and so then she goes in the car and she texts her i guess her ex-boyfriend now she's like i'm i'm in trouble you know i'm like the i crashed and the car doesn't work you know help me um and he does he goes he winds up going out and tries to find her and you know during when he tries to you know he goes over there you know she sees somebody and then she you know and then when uh legion finds her she's already dead and then the the guy who's whoever's hunting them or preying on them kills legion's character and then you know we got lip and his girlfriend and lip uh winds up finding the footage and you know he confronts her about it and uh you know and she, she you know uh wasn't that that guy whoever it is winds up you know f you know get, getting to the house and you know killing lip um having a little bit of a scuffle with lip's girlfriend and then ultimately killing her and then you see like the you know in the end how he, you know he he's it's not just one person he's done it with he's done it with several other people and he and he's gonna keep doing it and then this this is kind of how it like from you know they could have teamed up maybe and you know not split up and, and all that stuff which made it easier for that guy to kill them you know if they could if they could have stayed a team they could have survived that because the guy didn't even have a gun or anything he just killed them with uh taylor's hammer which kind of doesn't really like you know like link up anything to him and it winds up linking up to you know taylor the landlord it was quite an interesting movie i enjoyed it um you know little good movie by dave franco um yeah it's fun fun movie uh what was it called the rental there we go the rental by dave franco I see. I think we're gonna about to end it for today. Um, come back 
next week maybe might do it next week and um see um another you know watch another movie see how i uh See how it comes out in my head, because I think I'm a little dumb. Alright, guys. Laters.